In this video, we're going to look at color separations. We're going to actually use InDesign for this to give us a better understanding of how these inks are used in, um, on a particular project. So what do I have here? I have my cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, my main four CMYK that make up most ink when I'm using the four color process. These four colors, uh, from 0% to 100%, uh, magenta, yellow, and black, will make up every color that I can see that's been printed. Uh, obviously there is a rich black swatch that I've made as well, and we know that rich black swatches are 100% cyan, magenta, yellow, and black and make up a richer black or a blacker black. Uh, this is what we call a black or true black that is given to us. The rich black is what we can make that makes our darkers even darker. There's also a registration which we can see over here in our swatch panel. Let me move this over here, better look at it. And I'm going to go through all these, but there's also a registration black that we really don't use. We use it for uh, making our own trim marks, crop marks, but generally we don't use this. Uh, InDesign will make PDFs and use that uh, black registration for us. Uh, and then the, the whole point of this color separation is so when a printer receives this file, they're actually able to separate a lot of different things, which I'm going to show you later uh, for us. Now, I've also made a couple different things with our spot colors. So I made a Pantone spot color, a CMYK spot color, a, and a Photoshop CMYK spot color, which we're going to go through all these. I've also made some RGB colors here in InDesign, which you can do, but we're going to see what happens when we actually make a PDF out of them, flatten everything, and how those things get separated. Here I have a CMYK image, so properly done. It's a TIFF, 300 pixels per inch, CMYK, and it's made of that. Then we've also looked at making an RGB image. Once again, 300 pixels per inch, it's a TIFF, but this time it's RGB. So what happens there when we really shouldn't be using RGB colors in print production? And then here also I made a duotone image. And now this duotone image obviously uses two colors. I've set these up in Photoshop. And this duotone is actually using this Pantone spot color. And it's also using a black that I've set up as well, 100% K. This tritone Pantone is now using this Pantone color, it's using this Photoshop CMYK spot color, and now that's how that's made up, plus the black. So I just wanna show you how those things separate in um, at the printers, but obviously in, we're gonna do that in Acrobat. So let's take a look at the swatch panel really quick. We are familiar with some of this part. So we have our uh, fill, our stroke, uh, we can play with our shapes, we can play with our type, and we can play with the tint. This is a really nice piece here. Uh, in Illustrator, this usually shows up in the color panel, but in swatches, in InDesign, it shows up right there. So none we're familiar with. The red stripe means nothing. That would be, we have nothing there. Uh, it would be actually z paper. It would show you the paper. But uh, we'll go from there. Registration is that one color you cannot touch. It's mainly for registration marks. Now, the only reason why it's even there is if you were to set up your own trim marks, your own crop marks on your file uh, without using the PDF uh, version, making the PDF and it, adding it there for you, you could actually say, I want my trim marks to be this registration color. But sometimes it can get confusing because it is black and you sometimes might choose it accidentally, but it, nothing ever should be registration unless for some reason you're making your own trim or crop marks. Paper, paper is white. That's all it is. It's the white, there's no such thing as a white swatch. I've made this extra swatch here just by going to drop down new, new color swatch and making a swatch. But it is actually 1% K. So that's, that's the closest you can get to white by making your own swatch, which really we shouldn't do, but I'm just showing you that, yes, you're kind of able to do that. But paper is just that color, it's white. It is, it's assuming that all the paper you're going to print on is white, which more than likely it is. And so that is what we would refer to as white, or in this case, it's just considered paper. Then we have our black, our standard black. Once again, you cannot touch it. It's a process black, CMYK. It's 0% cyan, magenta. As I roll over, you can see 0% cyan, magenta yellow, and 100% K, uh, which is black. And then I made my rich black swatch. I just double clicked, made a new, new uh, swatch up here, and I made it all one, uh, 100, everything. 100 cyan, magenta yellow, and K. So it's a richer black. Uh, then we have our standard cyan, magenta yellow, which obviously you can see in the names is exactly what it is. But then I also made a Pantone color. So I quickly added a Pantone color, very easy to do, uh, new color swatch, and then we can go to our color mode, and then we can click on whichever Pantone book that you have, but in this case, Pantone plus solid coated, and you can pick your color swatch, go to your swatch book, type in the number, and all that good stuff. So that's what I did here. And this is normally the icons we would see. Let's take a look at the icons. But normally, we'd see this 
pattern here. This is a kind of, there's tiny little dots, meaning it's processed, because that's actually what our inks uh, come out as, tiny little dots that kind of lay over top of each other and make up our interesting colors. And this icon would suggest it's CMYK, the four color process. So look at this one, Pantone, it shows up as Pantone 246C, that's great. So that's the actual number code that's given to us on the Pantone booklet. And then I also have here, this little dot, as opposed to the processed little dots, I have one big dot, which means it's a spot color, it's an individual color that's pre-mixed by itself. And here I have the Pantone. So this is kind of like referring to the Pantone color booklet. So it's not CMYK, it's using a Pantone color and it's a spot color, meaning it's its own specific mixed color using Pantone. And now here's another color, but I did something a little bit different. I duplicated, oh no, actually, sorry, I made this color and it's 7619C and it is a Pantone color, but what I did, I actually double clicked on it, instead of saying it's a process color, I made it a spot color, but I made the color mode, instead of it being painted, I made it CMYK. There's a reason why we do this. This is a good option, a good way to create dye lines or folds or different lines that we actually don't want printed, but we also want to let the printer know that this color will not actually be printed, but it does represent something in our image. So this is actually a way to do it. You could actually, or vice versa, you can make a CMYK color and make it a spot color. So this is a, one reason why we do that. Now here, actually, when I made this image in Photoshop, the tritone and the duotone, especially the tritone here, I added these two specific Pantone colors, 246C and 7619C. When I added this into Photoshop and then brought the image, placed the image into InDesign, it added this swatch automatically. Spot color, Pantone color. Now the thing is, if I color uh, click on this, I cannot delete it. Any other one, I can delete. The trash can shows up. I can uh, This one I can't delete, obviously, too, because it's a part of this one as well. I cannot delete this. Only if I delete this image can I now have access to delete this swatch. This swatch is tied to this image, so you cannot delete it, which is kind of interesting. Okay, the last couple, I use an RGB color. We could tell this icon is RGB, or this swatch is RGB because of this icon here, RGB. I could also double click on it and see, yes, it's process and RGB. So it's a process color RGB. And look what else I did. I duplicated it and made it a spot color RGB, the exact same color. So if we look up here, we have our CMYK, all that. Now I have my specific Pantone color, which refers to this one. I have my CMYK spot color, which refers to uh, this one here. And I have the Photoshop CMYK spot color, which refers to this one here that came in automatically because I brought in this image from Photoshop, setting up the tritone and the duotone there. RGB color, that's what that refers to this one. And the spot RGB color refers to that one. So now that we have everything set up here, I've saved this and now I brought it into uh, Adobe Acrobat. So now I have this in Acrobat. Let's take a look at what we can do here. So um, it, it opens up here quite nicely. In my side menu or my drop downs, you can find these under tools as well. You can find uh, this print production. Okay, so I'm going to click on print production, which also shows up right here. And I'm going to go to output preview. Now, what I can do with the output preview is something pretty interesting. I can actually start separating, which is the whole point of this video, separating all the different things that I see. If I look at this first, there's only a few things I want to look at. There's a lot going on, but really I want to focus on a few things. I want to show what I'm actually showing. There's a lot of different things I can show here, but right now I'm showing all, which is fine. Then I want to get into the process plates and the spot plates. We can actually start turning these things on and off to get a better sense of what we're looking at, what's actually going to get printed. Now this is a mess. This is definitely, a, if a printer saw this, they'd be very upset. There's a lot, uh, there's a rich black, which is, uh, you know, more than we need sometimes for uh, just a normal black. There's spot colors, there's um, process spot colors, there's RGB colors, spot art. So there's a lot going on here, which this would be a nightmare for a printer. But this is obviously just a sample of what I'm trying to show you. So if I shut off certain things here, you're going to start seeing what makes up what. So the cyan is gone from the process plates, the cyan bar is gone, and the cyan is gone from these two images. But the cyan also leaves from this RGB color as well. So that's kind of interesting. It's an RGB color, but if I took out the cyan, it takes away from RGB. Kind of interesting. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the magenta. If I get rid of the magenta, magenta bar is gone, and the magenta leaves from here and also a little bit, uh, maybe from the RGB as well. I'm gonna get rid of the yellow. The yellow is gone. The yellow, that color bar is gone as well, the RGB phone, and just the black is left or the grayscale is left of this. 
Let's go one step further, get rid of the black, and now this is just left with the spot colors. Only the spot plates are left. Now registration, once again, will stay on unless you actually get rid of registration, uh, but it does show what was used in registration for the printer. That something was actually used that color, that registration color on the swatch panel in InDesign. So I have my spot colors all laid out. Let me look at something interesting here. I'm actually going to now shut everything off and just turn on one plate at a time of the process plates. Now I turn on the cyan, be like, why is that cyan picture not cyan? Well, when you turn each one individually on, it actually shows you the plate as if the plate was going to be made. So the plate being here would be obviously a black and white grayscale. The more dark areas you see, that means more of that ink, this one happened to be cyan, would go in that area. The lighter areas would mean less cyan would go there. So in these white areas, less cyan goes. Let's turn on the next one. Magenta, same idea. This would be only certain areas of magenta would show up here, okay? Uh, darker areas mean more magenta, lighter areas mean less magenta. And I'm gonna keep going, yellow. So now we see yellow, actually it's pretty dark down here. Well, that means more yellow goes here and lighter amounts of yellow go there. If you saw earlier in the image, there was a lot of green, and, um, not green, cyan and magenta in this area. And then same with the black. So here's the black, a little, a much lighter, but in this situation we do have that. But you're looking at, um, the black, and you're like, well, why is the black, why are these pictures now showing up? Because that black, which I made in Photoshop, I made these images in Photoshop, I used this black, 100% K. So now that black is also a part of these images as well. So we start to see that, and obviously some of these show up. Now I'm gonna turn on this spot plate just to get a sense of this. Now if I start looking at this, I was like, okay, this is what yellow looks like on paper. So we're not talking about plates anymore. The plates are black and white, and it shows you how much ink of that color is gonna go into those certain areas. The darker the area, the more ink, the lighter the area, the less ink. Now we're actually looking at what a just yellow would look like with these pictures. So here's the picture here. Don't mind these, because I do have spot plate on. I'm just looking at these pictures and the color bars. So I have the yellow on, so the yellow is a part of this. The yellow is a part of the rich black, obviously 100% yellow, and it's a part of the normal yellow bar we had. I'm gonna shut that off and turn on the magenta. This is what the magenta alone looks like on the paper. And once again, it's a part, a little bit of part of that RGB green, uh, the rich black it's part of, and it's a part of magenta as well. Go to continue on with the cyan. Once again, part of the cyan bar, part of the rich black. And it's part of this image. This is what the cyan looks on paper alone, on its own. Pretty cool. And then obviously I put them all together. This is what I get when I put all those plates together. So even if I shut them off and turn them on little by little, yellow, add magenta, that's what the yellow and magenta look like together. Add just the cyan, so I have cyan, magenta, and yellow together, no black yet. But once I add that black, it adds that depth, really, really nice. Now everything shows up, that's exactly how it looks like. Now I'm gonna shut those off and let's go take a look at these spot plates. So the spot plates, what do I have? It shows me here exactly what I have. I have the Pantone 246C, I have the Pantone 761C CMYK, the CMYK version of it, the Pantone 617C that came in with Photoshop, and I have that green RGB spot color. That other RGB that showed up is more or less kind of part of the CMYK. It's made up of that. It's not a spot color. It was a process color. So it's actually adding it to the process plate, even though it's RGB. It's splitting it up on its own using CMYK. Once again, even though it's an RGB color. That's not to say you shouldn't, you don't have to convert your RGB colors in InDesign to send something to print and everything should be CMYK. You should take any RGB color you have and convert it to CMYK. What I have here is my Pantone 246C. I'm gonna shut that one off and that's what I get. I'm, I'm missing that color, that 246C, but look where it shows up. It shows up in this image, if I get rid of that, gone. But I still have this 761C CMYK. Let's see what happens to this image in here. Which one actually disappears? Okay, the image stays. Remember, this was the one that I used in Photoshop. This is the one I set up in InDesign and just use it here. And that one is specific. It's a specific plate that we could turn on and off so the printer could see, okay, that color was used here, but not here. So, okay, let me shut that one off and let me look at this. Okay, this color was used here and here, and now they know how to do that, which is great. So, and then obviously leftover is our plate for the RGB uh, color, the green there. So that would be specific to that. So that's how that works in terms of turning these all on and off and kind of getting a sense of how 
inks are actually separated and how it actually works. Now let's go one step further and let's take a look at the show all. So originally we're showing everything. Now what if the printer wanted to be specific and I wanted to see just certain things. I want to see what is CMYK. And it's just going to show what would print in process. CMYK, yellow, black, rich, black. But interesting enough, that RGB color doesn't show up, even though it was being separated into process colors. And obviously this image shows up because it's CMYK. These blacks show up because they're a part of that black uh, process here. Okay, so let's go to RGB. Let's see what shows up RGB. Okay, there we go. This Remember, this image was an RGB image and it shows up. So now the printer can see, hmm, is everything CMYK here? Does it look good? I'm going to show RGB. No, that color is RGB and this image is RGB. That's no good. We need to make sure everything is CMYK or they can take care of a few things on their end. But for the most part, we should make sure, should make sure everything is going to be print ready CMYK. Another one we can look at is spot color. What's an actual spot color? Okay, the registration is a specific spot color. Uh, we have our Pantone uh, purple we used, these two spot colors. Anything that shows up in your um, swatch panel with that spot means it's a spot color. Here as well I use those two, three actually spot colors, the pink, uh, this purple one here plus the black, this uh, purple and brown one here for this image, okay? So all those show up as well. Now the few more I just want to show you is to get a, a good sense of it. We could take a look at just our solid colors. These are all the solid colors. None of the images show up. Okay. We can look at just the text and obviously just the text would show up and show us that. So the printer can really separate things uh, using this uh, really, really great tool, tool in Adobe Acrobat um, that would be really beneficial. Actually, this is Adobe Acrobat Pro DC that comes with Adobe CC. So there's a lot of great function here that we can get, and not only can the printer use, but you can use as well. If I just want to look at the images, okay, make sure those are the images, that's great, and certain things the way they set up. Because if you want to really make sense of your uh, project, your PDF after the fact is done, you could click on this and look at the RGB. Is anything RGB? Uh, do I have any registration on here? Uh, you can kind of take a peek at that and a lot of other things if you want to be on the safe side. So yeah, I do have registration on there. I used the wrong black. I should have used something else or whatever the case is. So this can really help you fine tune your artwork as well. Prepare it, get it ready for the print so then there's no issues either. So this is how the color separator works, output preview, and how your work gets printed. And this last thing is interesting too, where if I have everything shown, and I'm gonna say all, if you look at these percentages here, it's pretty interesting how if I hover over, it actually shows me what percentage of these plates is being used. I have my, obviously I hover over my cyan, I see 100% cyan. If I hover over magenta, 100% and, and so on and so on. If I hover over rich black, see everything turns 100% uh, in my process plates. And if we go on here, our individual spot color, the bars, you'll see that. But now if I start hovering over top of the image, we're gonna start seeing something pretty interesting too. And actually to the pixel, it kind of seems, or the area, tiny, tiny area of what percentage of the plates are being used. And this is pretty interesting here, uh, seeing that this area, 70%, 62, 60, 45, like that's the color there. If I go somewhere a little darker, obviously I'm gonna see more, um, more ink being used. If I go somewhere a little bit lighter, potentially I'm gonna see less ink being used. So that's kind of interesting how that all works. But now let's go over to the Duotone and we'll see this. Now we see the black, no CMYK or no CMY, but just the K. And I can see how this certain areas are being more, they use more ink. And obviously that spot color is being used in certain a certain amount as well. Very little up here in the light area, but a lot more in a darker area, including that black, that process black. And if I go down here, now I'm using two spot colors and that black as well. So we can start to see uh, how these inks come together, how the colors come together, overlaying over top of each other, and once again, how we're able to separate them and get a sense of how uh, all these inks work together.